shall I show you what it's like out there? The opening of a short story written and read by Anne Goodwin. The triage nurse inspects the wound and pronounces it superficial. Still, he says, you should get it stitched or it might heal skew with. Muttering under his breath, Lenny ushers her through the ranks of injured drunks and hypochondriacs to the far corner of the room. He wipes the orange bucket seats with a paper napkin before sitting down. Superficial, my ass! He could have put your eye out. Faith pats the wad of gauze taped to her cheek. The bleeding has waned to the occasional spot, but she's still loyal to the pain. Let's be thankful he didn't. From the threshold of the treatment area, a nurse calls out a name. A man in a football shirt hobbles towards the door. Above it, neon letters smooch across the display board. Waiting time, approx one hour. Please switch off all mobile phones. That's not so bad, says Faith. We could be home by midnight. Lenny pats his pockets. I'll go outside and give Gloria a ring. Here, take mine. Faith delves into her bag, but Lenny already has his phone in his hand. You're not expecting a message from him, are you? Sorry isn't in his repertoire. I need to know he's okay. Okay? Of course he's not okay. He's a fucking psycho. Lenny's jaw clenches. If he's any sense, he'll keep well away. He's lucky we didn't call the police. It was an accident. No one accidentally mistakes the dining room for a bottle bank. Faith seeks sanctuary in the black screen of her phone. Lenny softens. I didn't get the chance to tell you how fabulous you look tonight. A spot of blood on the bodice of her green silk dress rekindles his irritation. We didn't even... We don't even have the satisfaction of sending him the dry cleaning bill. He'd only tap you for a loan to pay it. It was a shock, him turning up like that, Faith concedes. Laid havoc with your place settings. The slightest twitch of his lips, until they're both laughing. The movement drags on her cheek, but Faith is relieved they're a team again. Go and speak to Gloria. Check on the girls. As they kiss, Lenny swaps his phone for hers. His step seems lighter as he crosses the room to the exit. Faith was combing mascara through her eyelashes and Lenny still in the shower when the doorbell chimed. She switched her gaze from the mirror to the clock on the bedside table. The dinner guests were half an hour early. Stealing a moment to complete her makeup and to smooth all evidence of irritation from her brow, Faith descended the stairs. The front door stood ajar. Six-year-old Lily, clad in pink pyjamas, loitering before it. Don't be rude. Faith hurried along the hallway. Let's show our guests into the lounge. Lily spun around. I don't know who it is. Faith patted her daughter's curls as she strode past her. A bearded man in a donkey jacket and dirty jeans hovered on the doorstep, a battered rucksack at his feet. What a lovely surprise, she cooed, in a tone better suited to the school gates. Uncle Ryan's come to see us. Can I doss with you for a few days? Of course. His beard scratched her cheek as they leant into each other in a fumbling approximation of a hug. Faith hoped her brother would want to wash away the stench of travel before the dinner guests arrived. So there's a little bit more of that story if you go to my website. Shall I show you? What It's Like Out There was published in August 2020 by Blue Lake Review.
So if you go to my website, anngoodwin.weebly.com, you'll find the link to the other 3,000 words of this story. And you get a chance to, um, you can order yourself a free ebook of five of my other short stories, plus the chance to learn more about my identity themed collection, Becoming Someone. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy the rest of the story.